So usually let me start by taking you a couple of hundred years in the past, um, back to a time when um, really the world was still not fully explored. And a map like this one was um, of strategic importance because it told you how to take people and goods from one place to the other. Now, fast forward to the present, and a much more relevant map may be one like this one. It's a map of the internet. And you won't see there continents, mountains, rivers, channels, because it's not about taking people and goods from one place to another. It's about taking information and digital assets from one place to the other. So the really important thing is not where the nodes are, but how they are interconnected, the topology of the network. And the topology of the internet is that of a highly connected network. In fact, it's something very close to what we could understand as a decentralized network, in the sense that it's fairly autonomous, not fully, but fairly. At least it's not controlled by a single government. And it's fault tolerant. So if some nodes go down, the network will readjust itself, will reroute traffic through a different path and get it to its destination. So the question is, if back in the 90s we already had something close to decentralization, then why is everyone so excited with blockchain and decentralization? The answer is in this triangle. It tells you what you can do with data. You can read it or store it. You can process it or transfer it. And as it turns out, the internet has just decentralized one of these three uh, things you can do with data, the transfer of information. So it has pulled the triangle out of centralized waters, but not completely. So we are in this iceberg situation. And it's not, not a good situation to be in because we've kind of learned how to replicate information like crazy without we even understood how to protect it. And you can read in the news, the pattern repeats itself, another database has been breached, you know, another ton of assets uh, have, have been stolen and hacked. The reason is because of that, because we have this machine for replicating information, but we still don't understand and know how to properly um, manage its storage and processing. There is another problem with si this situation, which is that of integrity. So let's say that you guys are the internet. You are different nodes in the internet. And you would like to agree on the state of a piece of data. Let's call it a ledger that contains several transactions. So in the presence of bad actors, so some of you not following the rules, some of you having a hidden agenda and trying to convince the others that your version of the ledger is the right one, this is a, not an easy problem to solve. Um, and it's actually the problem, exactly the problem, that blockchain solves. And that's why people are so excited. So once you've solved this problem for data, so imagine that you have this magical algorithm, you, each one of, of you follow that algorithm and you're able to agree on the status of data, even in the presence of some malicious participants, the minute you've done that for data, you've also done it for processing. Because processing is just a map between input data and output data. So let's say you agree on the inputs, then each one of you individually perform the processing of those inputs, you obtain the outputs, which is again data, and then you run this magical algorithm again to agree on the status of that output data. And in doing so, implicitly, you have agreed on the processing. So in taking the, the storage angle out of the centralized water, so to speak, the blockchain has also taken the other remaining angle, the processing, and it's taken the whole triangle out. That's why people are so excited about blockchain. Now, you may ask yourselves, how does it, does it really work, this agreement? It's something called a consensus mechanism, and it's a protocol that each one of you, as members of a blockchain, are going to follow step by step, like a recipe, and it's going to allow you to agree on the state of that data. But there are conditions to this um, situation. There is a theorem that says that this agreement, under the worst conditions possible, is only guaranteed when less than one-third of you are bad actors. As soon as one third or more are bad actors, this consensus, this agreement is not possible. Um, but even so, it's wonderful that there, have, there are those algorithms that can do it. And there are many of them. You may have heard about proof of work, proof of stake. Some, some algorithms require you to choose a, like a temporary leader 
that publishes the, the information. Some others will do some, some sort of voting. All of them have in common the exchange of messages. You need to talk to each other in order to reach consensus. So let's keep that thought in mind. Now the question is, is that the only way that there is to have a bunch of nodes like you guys have a decentralized type of consensus and operation? The answer is not really. There is another completely different approach to decentralization, which is called secure multi-party computation. And Nilion is based on that, so I'm going to introduce SMPC to you guys. And I'm going to do that with a simple example. Let's imagine I have a private key, and that controls my, my wallet with my assets, so it's really sensitive information. If I were to store that on a blockchain, I would have to send that private key to each one of you, because in a blockchain, each node holds a copy of the whole ledger. That's obviously a problem, because it's sensitive information, and I don't want you to have it. Now, SMPC takes a completely different approach. What I'll do is take my private key, and I'll run it through a shredder machine that will break it down into pieces, fragments. And those fragments are called, in the, in the SMPC world, shares. So I'm going to hand to each one of you a different fragment. Those fragments, those shares, have the property that when you get them, you cannot get back to the secret. So they're better than encryption. Encryption could be broken, eventually, if you have enough computational power and so on. These fragments are much better protected. It is impossible, mathematically impossible, to go from that share back to the secret. So now I have a really secure way of or using a, a decentralized network to store secrets. That's number one. But it's even better because it also works in the presence of some bad actors. So just like in the blockchain case, a percentage of you, the same percentage, less than one third, can be bad actors. And I can still recover my, my private key in this case, but any secret in general. And it gets even better because actually I can process my private key while it's in decentralized form. So with your help, I, I can sign, for instance, a transaction. So I get a transaction that I want to send, let's say, to Ethereum. So what I'll do is run it through the Shredder machine. I will get the share from the tra this transaction. I will send a share to each one of you. And now each one of you will have one share from the transaction and another one from the private key. And you will follow this SMPC protocol. It will involve you know, running some computations locally, but also exchanging some messages between you. And at the end of this protocol, you will get a share from the result of the computation. You send me those shares back, and I can reconstruct the signed transaction. So I can essentially, I have a secret, I can store it, and you send me the shares back, I can reconstruct the secret. But I can also do stuff with that secret. I can run algorithms of any kind with that secret. And the beauty of, this, of, of it is that in the process, you have had no access to the actual secret. You know what algorithm you're running, but you don't know the data that algorithm is running on. So it is really interesting in terms of privacy because it's kind of a way, a new way to work with decentralized information with a group of nodes where my information is secure, but you guys can help me collaborate. Um, you can collaborate and help me get things done, you know, transactions signed or anything. You can think of almost any uh, algorithm. The problem, however, with SMPC is speed. It takes a lot of time for the computation to run, essentially because you have to exchange messages. So in the case of the signing of the transaction, you have to send messages um, between, between you. So for every multiplication in the algorithm, you need to exchange, you need to send one broadcast message to the network and receive one message from each one of the other nodes. That's a problem, and very easily, one finds himself or herself in SMPC you know, having to spend hours, if not days, for an algorithm to finish. So if you haven't heard about SMPC, chances are that's the main reason, because it's not scalable. So it's only in, in a very few applications that it's found its way to production systems, maybe because you didn't care about delay uh, in those use cases, or maybe because the computations were so simple and trivial that the delay wasn't that noticeable. But it is the main problem with SMPC. And that is the reason why we are so excited about Nilion. 
So we've come up with a new SMPC protocol. We call it NMC. It stands for Neil Message Compute. And it does what it says on the team. Essentially, it allows you guys, the, the, the node of NMC nodes, perform any computation, but this time without exchanging messages. And the difference is crucial because when you're not exchanging messages, you can run multiplications at gigaflops, you know, in, in billions of multiplications every second. But when you have to send a message for every multiplication, that's 100 milliseconds in the best case. So the difference is in the billions of, of, um, of, of improvement in terms of speed. So zooming out a little bit, uh, this picture shows you how NMC, how Nilion, maps against the, the blockchain trilemma. This trilemma says that it's essentially very hard to build a network that is decentralized, secure, and also scalable. We've just covered one of the corners, the scalability, but actually NMC also brings improvements over the other ones. So for instance, for the decentralization, it offers its own way of agreeing, of agreement, that is not consensus and does not require the exchange of messages. So it's like an instant consensus. And also, regarding security, it uses a special type of protection of data, which is way better than encryption. So I will just go quickly through each one of those, giving you a little bit more information. Starting with security, um, you know, you can visualize encryption as you know, it's like a safe, you, you, you have your secret, you put it on a piece of paper, you put that paper inside of the safe, you close it, and you lock it. And that's how you keep it safe. The, the, the strength of that uh, mechanism relies on the hardness of a mathematical problem, which is, you know, the, the one that protects people from getting into the message. So it's like the hardness of finding the code. So the harder it is, obviously, the harder it is, uh, the harder it, it is the problem, the more difficult it is to open the box and get the message. The problem is that it is designed to be opened. So there is somewhere one key that opens that box. And so there is no perfect encryption. Every encrypted message will eventually be decrypted if there is enough effort and computational um, uh, time that is invested in it. Also, another problem with encryption is that typically you don't cover the whole triangle that we saw before. So you can store information in encrypted form, you can send it, but if you want to process it, you have to decrypt it, then process it in plain text, and then encrypt it back again. Now, there's something called information theoretic security, which is way better than encryption. It does not rely on the hardness of any cryptographic problem. So you're not factoring prime numbers or anything like that. In fact, it looks like destroying information. So in, you know, in the visualization that we had before, it would be the equivalent of taking the piece of paper and burning it down into ashes. So when I'm holding a share to you of my uh, private key, that's what I'm holding over to you, my ashes. You know, the ashes of, after burning that key. There's no information left in those ashes, as there is no information left on the share. And that's why it's impossible to reconstruct the message. And it doesn't matter if you have infinite computational power, so it's safe against unbounded adversaries, and also if you have future quantum computers. So there's nothing to exploit um, in, the, in the share, and that's, therefore it's, it's impossible to, to break it and get back to the message. That's how strong the privacy and security of Nilion is, and it does not make use of encryption, it makes use of ITS everywhere. So I'm going to try here to give you a sense of how is it possible that NMC is able to run computations without exchanging messages when SMPC protocols, um, the state of the art of them, uh, require, require that. And I'm going to use probably more, one of the most famous SMPC protocols, which is BGW, which makes use of a cryptographic primitive called Shamir Secret Sharing as an example. Now that Shamir Secret Sharing is the shredder machine, is the one that takes a secret and break it down into, into particles, and then, or, or shares, and then you get the shares and, are, and you're able to reconstruct the secret. Now the thing is that we are asking too many things of that single cryptographic primitive. It has to be correct. So when you operate with the shares, you need to be able to reconstruct the result from that operation, from that algorithm. But it also has to be ITS, information theoretic secure, 
Um, and it also has to operate in the presence of some percentage of bad actors. So three things, it, it can do the three things, but at the cost of the correctness not being completely efficient in the sense that you guys need to exchange messages if you want to use PGW for the multiplications. So what we're doing in, in NMC is using two cryptographic primitives, and we are dividing the burden, the responsibility between the two of them. One of them, we tailor made it just for the correctness. So it is really good at computing multiplications and additions. And it can do that without the exchange of messages. It's also information theoretic secure, but that's all we ask of it. And this is a masking operation. It's an ITS masking operation with blinding factors. And then we use the second uh, cryptographic primitive, which is the same, Shamir secret sharing, but not to hide the secret but to hide the blinding factors that are, that are kind of masking the secret. So in doing so, we are combining the two of them in tandem so that Shamir secret sharing is providing, you know, the ability to work in the presence of bad actors and also information theoretic security. And this masking primitive is bringing a correctness which does not require the exchange of messages. And that's how we've managed to have the three of them in a very efficient way. This is a glimpse of the maths and the protocol. I'm not going to cover it here, but if you have questions, we can, we can cover it in more detail. I'll be happy to. Now, as I said before, the difference is substantial because in standard SMPC, for every multiplication, you have to broadcast messages, receive messages. Let's say it's 100 milliseconds. And we're saying here that we can run them in, at CPU uh, speed, so it's essentially billion of, billions of multiplications uh, per second. So we're talking about a potential uh, difference in terms of speed of a billion fold. Now, visiting the last corner, the decentralization, I said before that NMC was kind of an alternative way to reaching an agreement uh, on the status of data. The way it works on the blockchain, we covered it, is, is a consensus mechanism that requires you guys to exchange messages. The way it works in NMC, it's slightly different. You have run your computation without communicating with each other, and now, so there's no chance for you to, to cheat there uh, for the bad actors amongst you. Um, the only occasion you have to cheat is when you send me those shares back to me. So you could be either not sending anything, or you could be sending me a share that is not the correct one, trying to you know, make me reconstruct the wrong result. However, all those shares are bound by some mathematical properties. They are points in a polynomial of a certain degree. And that polynomial, those points have redundancy. So we have more points that we would need to reconstruct the polynomial using interpolation. And we're exploiting that redundancy in order to run error correction. So I, when I get the shares from you guys, I can run an error correction code locally in my computer, and I will detect which, one of, which ones of you are, have lied to me uh, and have sent me the wrong share. I will discard that, and I will be able to reconstruct the right result in the presence of bad actors. So exactly the same results that blockchain obtains from a consensus algorithm, we have obtained from this other method. But this other method, if you've noticed, does not require you guys to exchange messages like consensus mechanisms do. So it is consensus delivered to my computer without the exchange of information, instant consensus. And the last property is the one we've been discussing, is the information theoretic security, which blockchains by default don't have. So all the information is public, although you can do combinations with zero-knowledge proofs, but that's a separate discussion. So, thinking about this, um, what, what are we going to do with this technology? So, thinking about crypto, essentially, we're going to work in two phases. In phase one, we're going to focus on sensitive information in the crypto world, essentially private keys. And initially, it's going to be just about safely storing those keys and then being able to retrieve them, as, an, as, you know, as, as, as opposed to keeping them offline in a cold world, for instance, or writing them down on paper, something like that, which is kind of 18th century. Um, so for the first time, the online world is a safe place to store that sensitive information. 
going beyond that, the next thing is now we're going to be able to actually work with those keys. I'm, I'm going to be able to sign transactions, not me directly reconstructing the key, but you guys being the NMC network and the NMC nodes, you're going to help me sign transactions, uh, but you won't be able to see the key and you won't have to reconstruct it. And then taking that even further, what, you can, what we can do is have all my keys from my, the different blockchains in the Nidion network under a single account. So one, from one access point, I can control all of the blockchain interactions that I have. The second phase is thinking about becoming a meta leader. So this is a kind of basic infrastructure that we're building. And on top of this, you can both build kind of blockchains or decentralized um, networks, but you can also service existing um, blockchains in a number of ways. For instance, you have the multi-chain wallet that I've just discussed. You could take that a little bit further and then you would have uh, decentralized exchanges. But you could also have DAO tools. So for instance, the voting that takes place in DAO tools, you can carry this out using NMC. And also you can KYC, you can verify the identity of the creator of a DAO and then subject to voting from the different nodes the fact of whether this person is being um, honest or not. And if, if there's a suspect that this person is stealing funds, then this voting would succeed, and then there would be a mechanism that reveals the identity of this person so that legal action can be taken. That's just an example. Private metadata. It's very important to be able to control the release of this information to the public in the context of NFTs. So, for instance, if we're... The problem with blockchains is that they are public, right? So this metadata is very sensitive how, we, how and when we make it public, but in NMC, it is not public. And you can allow, but just an access control exercise, when this information can be reconstructed and all at once for everyone, so that no one can take advantage of this situation. Or also, what we have is actually like private smart contracts. So when you run an algorithm in NFC, it's like a private smart contract. You can run that independently on top of NMC, but you can also link that to Ethereum to make it more scalable. And that was just about crypto, but what happens beyond crypto? So thinking about the more traditional world, uh, what we have is a decentralized network, which is ITS, and in essence, can disrupt the use of encryption. So it can render encryption obsolete. So you can think about applications in almost any domain, like you know, B2B, B2C, or, or B2G. Thinking about um, companies, so businesses, we can disrupt any business that actually deals with encrypted, encrypted information um, or sensitive information. So it could be the storage of sensitive corporate information or personal information from individuals. It could be private keys. It could be passwords. It could be a number of things. There's a lot of things we can disrupt in this domain. And regarding B2G, so regarding governments, we can do private implementations. So government X would have several nodes in different locations, probably in different cloud providers for, for security, and they would control everything that happens in that network. So it would be secure, it would be decentralized, uh, but it could be kind of controlled by them. And it could serve a number of use cases around signatures, around authentication, even around collaboration between different governments. So, for instance, different security agencies could collaborate without having to share information, like Interpol with CIA and so on. So, just to summarize, what we have here is a new path towards decentralization. It achieves the same results in terms of um, you know, number of nodes which have to be good actors and bad actors and so on, but it does so in a very different way. So it does so with, um, with not a consensus algorithm, but rather something different, a reconstruction of information locally. It's very fast, so it's, it's, it's an instance where privacy did not come at the cost of speed, and it has best-in-class privacy, which is information theoretic security. There's nothing, there's nothing better than that. Um, so that's, that's Nilion. And then with that, you can apply it to the different domains that we have discussed. You can apply it to the crypto world uh, to store and, and secure sensitive information, but also to disrupt more traditional businesses around the use of encryption and encrypted information. Thank you very much for, for your attention.